monk mode is a lie. It's just an, a lazy excuse to be yeah. like, I don't have enough brain bandwidth to focus on these other areas, so I'm just gonna use it for this one. How big is your social media team and are you traveling with the camera guy? I live with him. My team is super lean, literally three people. Do you have a preference when it comes to a platform? Snapchat has been amazing. There is so much people on the platform and so mm. few creators get on Snapchat. I'm like shooting myself in the foot right now by revealing <laughs> The following is a conversation with Adolfo Pereira. He's an international fitness influencer, business owner, and overall legend. He had zero followers in 2021. Now he's looking at a 1.3 million subscriber base on YouTube, 387,000 followers on Instagram, and 1.9 million followers on TikTok. This guy is everywhere right now. He's known for his ultra ultra viral short form video content and he's one of the ogs that's been in the personal development for a very very long time so i got him on the podcast and after a very very long time of dming back and forth for many years we finally got time to get together we of course talk about what is the spark that needs to be ignited for you to start your journey as an entrepreneur or just self-development plus also what it means to travel the world, how to stay in shape while traveling the world, how to increase your testosterone, and much, much more. Without any further ado, there he is. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, Mr. Adolfo Pereira, welcome to the podcast. Do you know, has anybody ever told you that you look like a real-life Chad meme? <laughs> Thank you. It was not like that 10 years ago, for sure. <laughs> but you know, you know first... the it was not like that when I first started seeing your content in 2015. <laughs> Damn. I can tell you. Man, you've you know, thanks for the long follow. I appreciate that. But you know, the chat meme, it literally looks like you. And uh, it's, you know, congrats, obviously, on your epic transformation. Now, 2021, you had zero followers. Now, 2024, YouTube, 1.3 million subscribers. Instagram, 387,000 followers. TikTok, 1.9 million followers. How did you do it? I was literally talking about this with someone last night, and uh, I think anyone can achieve anything in life. And uh, the way they can do it, it's so simple, but just like one in a hundred thousand people do it. It's just with Google. With Google, you can find answers to, to anything. And um, I really broke it down, like how can I make... Uh, uh, you know, someone all of myself online. How can I, you know, have a voice about something on, on uh, online? And I researched a lot about this. And man, I went really deep in like uh, researching about the algorithm, researching about mm. social media, how to go viral. And um, so that's how the the following started with a lot of research, with a lot of uh, implementing it, of course, trial and error, and. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how I I got here pretty much with you know a lot of research, a lot of trial and error, and implementing, and uh, yeah, that was it. Dope, my man, dope. I mean, what platform was first? Which one was so, the one first where you blew up? Mm -hmm. So the first one was TikTok. So back in twenty twenty one, I was you know like you you know I I've met Mario Tomic and uh, you, shout out. You, Shout out to him. And he really got me on YouTube. It was like, hey, you should start posting on YouTube and everything. And I gave it a try, but I was not getting much traction. I imagine it was easier for you, for example, back in the day, like 2015 and everything. <laughs> yeah. But 2020, st starting out with YouTube, it was definitely not easy. And uh, I gave it a try with short form content in 2021. And, you know, people were used to a lower quality of content mm. on the platform on TikTok. Mm. And I came in with like good advice, like solid adv advice on like fat loss and how to get in shape and everything like Polish. And it stand, stood out from everyone else that was dancing mm. and stuff on the platform. <laughs> and uh, while you had platforms with people like Mario Tomic and everything with super high quality content already on YouTube, Mm. You had platforms that there was a lack of this quality content, right? And yeah. TikTok was one of them. Snapchat was another platform where, you know, there was a big lack of this quality content. And um, yeah, that's that's what made it easier to like kickstart my uh, my fitness uh, career, let's say. And um, yeah, then after you build up a, pla a, a platform, it's easier to transition in the other ones, like you know. So. 
yeah. then it easier for me to transition on YouTube and and uh, and everything after I build it up on those platforms. Yeah, I mean it's it's still rare though. Like usually you see one guy like kind of cracking one platform, like whatever YouTube, and then because of that they kind of have Instagram a little bit and TikTok as well but they don't actually have native content on there or they haven't built a, a an audience from scratch there for you it really seems like you built an audience by understanding TikTok and you got the TikTok followers and then you did the same on YouTube so it's like you mastered multiple platforms instead of just mastering one and then just kind of have it trickle down do you still do you still remember what was kind of like the first video that blew you up on TikTok I do. It was a, a, a video about, so a lot of people, they think just eating bad food, eating a burger or something, it's what makes them fat. Mm. And it was, it was a video talking about, no, it's not the bad food that makes you fat. It's like the calories. It's being on a calorie <laughs> server. It doesn't matter if it's healthy food or not. And it was a video debunking that. And I think it was my first video that, that got to like a million views. Sure. And this was just like within three weeks of creating the account. So uh, that was that was like, it really motivates you when you start getting some kind of Sick. results and doubled down uh, when that happened. But, uh, and that's what I preach pretty much all the way until now. That's what a lot of my uh, content is about. Is like, you can still enjoy life and uh, be in good shape. It's mm -hmm. like people look at me, look at Mario, and they think those guys must be eating salads all the time. They must have mm -hmm. a really boring life. Bro, people have no idea. Even when I was hanging out with Mario, when we were going to the restaurant and everything, you have <laughs> no idea. Like the food <laughs> we have. <laughs> if, if people knew like the, the, the amount of sheet meals that we have, because <laughs> we set up our life in a way that, you know, we burn those calories. Yeah. And of course, 80% of the time we're actually eating the, the healthy food. Yeah. But because we set up our life in a way that, you know, like we're in good shape, we can enjoy the, the cheat meals um, and still be in good shape. And that's what a lot of my content is about, like how to enjoy life uh, while, you know, being in good shape, you know, year round pretty much. Yeah, dude. Amen. Amen to that. I mean, I also remember my buddy, uh, Greg from Kino Body, you know, he like way back in the days in 2015 already, he was kind of like one of the first guys that was like, Hey man, like, why do you go to the gym six times a week? Like I go like two to three times and do some compound heavy lifts and I eat steak and fries. And that really kind of like kind of set the stage for this, this idea that also you are a big proponent of, of like, Hey, like fucking enjoy your life, but set up in your, set your life up in a way so it's easier for you. Like I talk a lot about this too, is like the setup lifestyle of like make shit easy for you to really crush it. I mean, same for me, I have a treadmill desk. Like right, this is actually a treadmill desk and I can move the desk up and down. I can move it up. I have the treadmill underneath and I just walk. I walk freaking 15,000 steps a day. And plus I do three times lifting and like I don't even leave the freaking house. I'm just there. I'm just, you know, doing calls while walking. I'm doing my client things while walking and I get all these steps in and I can cheat almost every weekend. I have like huge cheat days almost every weekend. Like last weekend, I, I baked banana bread for the first time in my life. I, <laughs> people think it's like the cool millionaire lifestyle. In reality, I'm just baking banana bread and having like the best time of my life playing video games, <laughs> baking my own banana bread. Um, and next weekend, my, my girlfriend's going to make lasagna and I'll make banana bread and we're just going to live it up, man. Party hard. <laughs> but um, <laughs> do you do you have a preference when it comes to uh, uh, a platform? For me, it always changes. Like it used to be Instagram. Right now, it's it's Twitter. I love Twitter. Um, but also YouTube is kind of getting more interesting for me again. What, what about you? Man, Snapchat has been amazing. It's no fast. way. It's a... I'm, I even feel bad for, for it's like I'm, I'm like revealing the secret here and now everyone's <laughs> gonna, you know, but it's <laughs> such a blue ocean, like there is so much people on the platform and so mm. few creators mm. and people think still think that nowadays Snapchat is like it used to be like 10 years ago where it's just like you're just seeing the snap stories from your friends. No. Okay, it's just like Instagram Reels. Like you have the mm. equivalent of Instagram Reels on, on Snapchat, which are called Spotlights. And it works exactly the same way. If you put out good content, it's going to be shown to uh, people that don't follow you, millions of people. No way. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm going to write my visuals guy right now. 
Yes. I had no idea because I remember Snapchat, like, because we talk, you know, you mentioned RSD earlier. You've been checking out my stuff since 2015. Like, remember Snapchat back then? That was before yes. Instagram stories. Yeah. Instagram t stole stories from freaking Snapchat. And from, in my head, I'm like, yeah, why is, why is Adolfo mentioning Snapchat? What the hell? Exactly. But I had it's, no idea it has reels. Holy shit. I'm literally going to tell my guys right now, hey, start uploading reels on Snapchat. <laughs> it's insane man it's insane and it's a thing like specifically for the us which is like my biggest demographic of course of like clients for the fitness coaching and everything i find a lot of 40 year olds 35 year olds 50 year olds that the hmm. only social media platform they have is snapchat this is the most mind-blowing thing people think oh it's just for kids and everything no there is a lot of people in the US that their only social media platform is Snapchat. And a hundred percent. And I can tell you that uh, this doesn't happen a lot in Europe. So uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, you're in Europe and everything and uh, you're not aware, but US, it's very big in the US and it's also very big in the Middle East. So like mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Qatar. Um, yeah. Random <laughs> Qatar. Snapchat. Yes. So I'm getting it right now very big there as well so i think for any online coach out there get on snapchat i'm like shooting myself in the foot right now by revealing this <laughs> you know what we'll but, just we'll cut it out we'll be like yeah. every time you say it it will be like beep and everybody's like what platform is it <laughs> just for the freedom business mentoring uh, members <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> You know what's funny? It's for some random reason I have it installed on my lap on my phone. I don't know why. I don't, it's on my phone already. What? Still from 2015. It, it could be. I mean, I'm wondering if I still have an account. I mean, I don't. I can't remember. It must have been like RSD Max or something that I'm still on there. But yeah. you know, you know, here's what's crazy. So, in the, and because because I saw I watched a podcast with uh, my other friend Michael Sartain that also had you on, and. Um, and it's so freaking crazy that, okay, uh, let me back paddle here for a second. So we all know Owen, right? RSD Tyler, aka Owen Cook. I was his assistant and then, you know, I worked with him. I built my, my first online, multiple seven figure online coaching business with him. And he always kept saying, yeah, I'm building RSD like with 10 years in mind. Cause like all the guys that are following us right now, they're all like 19, 20, 22 years old. In 10 years, they're all going to be in their 30s. They're all going to be making multiple seven figures. They're all going to be making their own businesses, being crushing it on all kinds of social media platforms. And that's why we will still be relevant. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, crazy Owen with the ginger beard. 10 years from now, blah, blah, blah. You Silly you, you know? And now 10 years later, literally 10 freaking years later, I started with RSD. I think it must have been 2013 or 14. 10 years later, guys like you, guy like every single guy that i meet that is like making crushing it they're like oh man i used to watch rsd that was the first thing for me i just got into girls and self-development with that like every single guy and then you know i watch someone's content and i look up to them and then somewhere i hear oh yeah they used to watch your stuff they used to watch rsd and it's so fucking crazy that there's a whole generation of guys that got inspired by you know the, this was how to talk to girls content to fucking improve their life and now they're all moving on to crush it and you know guys like you is a perfect example of that I, and i wanted to ask you why do you think why do you think is that mm -hmm. so i think anyone in this you know niche of of people we want to maximize every single aspect of our life yeah the relationships being one of them back then there was no one else like you guys were like really dominating the the platform right so by, like by a long shot by there was no one else that came even close right so literally anyone that nowadays i'm 30 years old anyone that the 10 years ago was 20 when you're 20 there's not much else you're thinking about like <laughs> unless you're like him and gads you're like one in <laughs> 10 or something there's not much else that you're thinking about other than like, oh, I want to get a hotter girl and this and that. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, like you guys really drew people in with the, with the dating stuff. And for me personally, like I got a girlfriend um, once I started watching your guys' content within like a few months. Nice. Uh, 
you know, and I was like with her for like two years. We dated for like two years, like 2016, 17. And I also like the fact that even though I was with a girlfriend, you guys also had other content to improve my other my life. Right. So I all I was also like reading a lot of books. I was also like starting the business and everything. Um, so it was not like a one thing that was like dating and picking up. No, it was like improve all the app. That was actually you were like back then uh, my favorite from like era, not to like be, uh, be like <laughs> it, you were actually because your lifestyle was like encompassing everything. Right. Yeah. You were making money you were going to the gym we we're like doing everything and uh that was what i liked about it and that was what i wanted for my life as well so um i think that's the reason why it attracted a lot of guys like that now are successful it, it's beautiful that you say that because for me like that was one of the focuses that i wanted to have with the first business <clears throat> i didn't want to be just the guy that's like i'm just the guy who helps you get girls Cause I always felt like, cause it was the same for me, you know, like I am part of that generation um, th that I'm like, it kind of started with, I just want to get a girlfriend, like you said. And then, and then I'm like, but hold on a second. I mean, I just created something out of nothing. I just talked to a girl, whatever in, 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 in next to me in class at university. And now we like each other. And now we're on a date. Like that was so mind blown for me that I'm like, if I, as this dorky nerdy Jode can make a, a girl that is clearly out of my league talk to me like what else is possible like what what if i just go to the gym like maybe i can also get like a sick body and like a six pack you know so and then you do that and then you're like hmm why don't i just like post on social media and build a brand and build a business and it's like for for me it was just this like it things are possible it's it's possible to improve your life and once you once you realize that i think you get hooked it's just it's just an addiction man and, you know, some people are addicted to porn. Some people are addicted to cigarettes. I'm addicted to growing, <laughs> like going to the freaking gym and, and, and doing cool yeah. shit. And yeah, and it's beautiful, man. That's literally happiness for guys. Like we get happiness, in, like improving. Like, that's like how we get happiness. Like it's so, at least like for most guys, like I feel that's how you get happiness. Like if you're, if you're progressing, like progression, progression is happiness um and uh, yeah that's how you get hooked to it because you get that progression you get that dopamine and, yeah dude uh, yeah it's and, beautiful man it, it's like because i don't know because <clears throat> I, I use I, I get addicted very easily i got i got addicted to video games all the time like diablo 2 got addicted to it then i played it for a year you know then like two years later i'm like well, diablo 2 let me play again boom addicted again world of warcraft like i i'm i get addicted very easily but then I'm happy that I found something that I can get addicted to that's very productive. Is that the same for you as well? Do you easily get addicted to stuff? I was 100% addicted to video games as a kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> single. Like, I was really into it. I, but I think it's a common theme. Like, all of my friends, they're also entrepreneurs. Maybe 80% of them. Like, they were also hooked into video games when they were a kid. Mm. So, I guess it's kind of like related this like personality that we have of being like a business owner and like developing like every area of our life i think it's kind of related to as a kid to video games and everything for some mm. reason like people continue it as as they grow older other people like now i just have like a nintendo switch that i play like if i'm on a date or something uh, <laughs> <laughs> because at least this one like it doesn't get me so addicted like let's say a playstation or something yeah. um but uh, the point is like i think this kind of personality that we have we have that thing in common of like really liking video games at least when we were younger i think we all have that on, in common it's our generation man it's our freaking generation what what are you playing though or what what did you play and what are you playing now on the switch Oh, uh, back then I was a lot into for, into first person shooters. I Ooh. I was into <laughs> those. A lot of League of Legends as well. Um Hearthstone. Yes. It was roughly when I started watching your guys content and all that I dropped the video games aside. <laughs> to be now I I just play some some Super Mario uh on the dates and everything and like those like smaller games like all right, hold, on. hold on Jose. so 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 you meet a girl on a date yeah. she's excited to meet mr chad and you're like 
one second and you just get the you get the Nintendo out and you just start playing? Or how does that work? No, it's like with girls that I, let's say with a girl that I've been seeing for a longer time, I wouldn't do that on the first date, to be fair. It's just with someone that I've been seeing already for like let's say a month or so. They All right. they, gra they graduate to playing video games with me. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I, <laughs> I, I, that, that's really cool. All right, damn, dude. Um, yeah, shooters, man. For me, it was Counter Strike 1.5, 1.6, Counter Strike Source. Um, because you get so competitive. Yes. It's it, it, it's like and here's the funny thing. I, I just wrote a YouTube video about that earlier today, and I'm uh, I'm gonna shoot it tomorrow. It's like the game starts being fun and then like a year later you're like hey the game hasn't been fun for two years already and you just play it to get better like you don't even play it because it's fun um but i honestly think like these things especially video games they teach you so many things about grinding about uh you know delaying rewards and about strategizing and and being able like Counter-Strike, for example, or you said League of Legends, like it teaches you so much about team play, like literally team play. Who does what? Can you rely on someone else? Hey, my teammate fucked up. How can I be constructive when I give him criticism? Same goes with Counter-Strike. And then you play real-time strategy games. I used to play this game called Zeus, where you, where you built like an ancient Greek city. Um, uh, a lot of command and conquer that's just yeah. like delegating strategizing you you think three four five steps ahead and it's funny because our our generation of parents they used to think hey video games makes you stupid like my parents always said like stop playing it makes you stupid it's unhealthy da, da, da. but i think guys like us you know we've had mario tomage on the on the podcast as well you know he's got a beautiful daughter i'm like we're going to encourage our kids to play video games. We're like, oh, yeah, that, that's fucking awesome. Let's play together. And that, I, I think that's really, really freaking cool, man. Yes, yes, 100%. And I can tell you an interesting fact. When I was playing League of Legends back in 2013, 14, that was the reason I got into personal development in the first place. No way. Because I was watching those YouTube videos, like how to get better playing and like how to the strategy of the week and this and that. And the guy was saying, like, if you really want to be good at League of Legends, you have to improve, like, the remaining areas of your life. So you should start by watching some TED Talks and stuff. Bro, that's how I started. Like, <laughs> that guy, that League of Legends coach, he told me, hey, you have to improve the other areas of your life. So I went to watch some TED Talks. And then on the side of the TED Talks, there were some RSD videos. And I'm like, who is this RSD Max guy? <laughs> Our compilation. <laughs> Let me see from a TED Talk that I watched because of a League of Legends guy told me to. So that's how the rabbit hole started for me. Damn, man. <laughs> that is so fucking funny. Uh, you know, the butterfly effect. Like one random video gets suggested and boom, you get sucked into a complete new life, man. And... It, you know, that's why I love doing this podcast because it allows me to talk to awesome people like you. Like, I don't even care that it's being recorded, you know? I mean, I do, but I'm like, the main reason why I want to do the podcast is because I want to have excuses to talk to people and ask them cool questions, you know? Uh, so that's really inspiring. And, and I know one thing that you've been observed saying is something quite controversial. You have been saying monk mode is a lie. Elaborate on that. Yeah, so we have only a short time span as like young guys, right? Like maybe 20 to 50, we're considered like young and on our prime, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically on our thirties to be fair, like it's when we were on our, on our prime. Yeah. So why are we going to waste years of our life that we're not enjoying like certain parts of it, right? Like why, like I say people like in your twenties, just make money, just ignore everything else. Just stay in your mom's basement making money and then uh, and then don't care about girls, don't care about like getting in shape, just focus on money. Then when you have a million dollars on your bank account, then you can start, you know, getting in shape and everything. And then yeah. when you're in shape, that's when the girls will come to you. <laughs> you're 35, right? And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, and there is big people preaching this. It's not like something... Yeah. No, it's like some of the biggest like influencers of like mm -hmm. the manners preach this. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah. because you can do it all. And in a lot of, of ways, it even benefits you that, you know, 
while you're working on your business, you have a cool girl, girl on your side that's supporting yeah. you yeah. because you talk to her on the street in the first place, right? Yeah. Um, it's not like one thing is against the other. Like if you if you do a cold approach, you're going to have your mind outside of the business and this and that. No, I think it's like plates. You have like relationships, you have business, and you have health. And people think, oh, I just have to focus on one. Other. No, it's yeah. like plates. And you're like, you're going in this one. Okay, this one is good. Okay, let me let me uh, now go on this one. Let me yeah. go on this plate. And it's like the, the plates, you're always trying to keep them balanced. Mm. Um, I don't know if you heard this analogy before. You probably did. Um, and that's how I go with my life. Like, I'm like, I'm balancing a plate. Okay, business is good. Now, what area of my life am I missing? Oh, okay, business. Okay, the relationships. And I'm always like trying to balance everything. Right. Yeah. And I think people that go on these monk modes, it's just an ex a lazy excuse to be yeah. like, oh, like I'm I'm I don't have enough brain bandwidth to to focus on these other areas. So I'm just gonna use it for this one. I I don't really approve that to be fair. A hundred percent agree, man. because uh, I remember back in my dating coaching times, do you know how many freaking clients I've had? that thought that too. They're like, I'm 35 now. I've been told my whole life I need to work on my career and now I'm making all this money and they've been, I've been told then the girls will come. There's no girls and those and the girls that do come because I'm making all this money, they're freaking gold diggers and they don't love me for myself and I'm having huge issues and I don't know how to do that. And they would literally come to my in-person coachings. Back in the days, we used to do in-person coachings, you know, where we would be, you know, I would fly into a city, I'd be there for a week and I'd have three premium clients that kind of go out with me, I would take them under my wing. And here I was as like a 23 year old, completely broke. Like I didn't shower. I was stressed the whole time. I looked like shit. I had the man bun. I wasn't in shape like now. I wasn't making much money. In the beginning, I was making like 10, 15K a month or something. And then I had this Chad guy that was making multiple seven figures, business owner, pilot license, awesome adventurous life, but couldn't get any girls. And then they would learn from the dorky Austrian dude <laughs> on how to talk to girls and how to go on dates. And um, that was way before monk mode was even a thing. Like nobody even knew what the hell monk mode was. And now I see this stuff being jammed down young guys' throats on, on, on TikTok and YouTube and whatnot. Like monk mode, monk mode. It sounds so freaking easy, but no, it sucks because... <sighs> Just focusing on one thing, like you said yourself, it's like you're going to completely neglect all the other things and they're not even, they're, they're going to feed into each other if you do it right. Like you said correctly, I mean, I live with my girlfriend right now. I mean, I have multiple home bases. I'm usually in, in Cyprus, but sometimes I'm somewhere else and, and I live with my girlfriend and I'm like, she's super supportive like she's i mean sometimes not sometimes she comes in while i'm working sending showing me a cat meme or something like she's and i'm like get out i'm working and she's like but the cat look at it <laughs> but <laughs> but but it really helps it feeds into each other you know when i'm at the gym my mind rests it's like i i put my phone on flight mode i just have it connected to spotify i blast music and i'm just working out so for me my mind is resting it's relaxing so when i come out from the gym i have all these cool ideas and now I get back to work and now my body is resting and it just plays into each other. But if you just neglect all the other parts just to go all in on one part, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be fucking alone. You're going to be vitamin D deficient because you're never going out. Um, you probably you're not going to be able to work as hard because your body is just full of shit food and whatnot. And uh, like you said, man, like you should enjoy life. And that's what I always think is so cool about your brand, man. Like you say, fucking enjoy life, do cool stuff. And don't kill yourself over the progress. And I think a lot of young guys need to hear that. Yeah. It, to be fair, like when I started, I had a different business. I actually started back in 2016 with a graphic design uh, freelancing and then agency. Um, and I looked at all of the other people that were in my field, other entrepreneurs, like business owners, and I wouldn't exchange lives with them because they were out of shape. To be fair, like they were out of shape. They were not experiencing life. They, they didn't left their country ever. They had an, an attractive partner. And I'm like, like I, I don't want to change lives with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the reasons that led to the career change. And then meeting Mario, we were both living back then in the same building in Cancun in 2020. By a coincidence, by a common, because of a no common way. friend, because of Bostian. <laughs> Bostian, shout out yeah. to him. <laughs> yeah, he introduced us and everything because he saw we're both into fitness. 
And uh, I started looking at Mario and was, I was like, now this is a, it was like seven years older than me or something. Mm. And I'm like, this is where I see myself in seven years. Mm. When I look at him, not, not these other guys, like I was in the graphic design field, not these other guys like out of shape, don't try, no, this guy, I want to be there in seven years. And uh, of course I started hanging out with him and everything. And eventually that year I ended up selling my graphic design agency. And that's where I started with like going full time on, on the fitness thing. Um, and that's what led me to preaching. Okay, now I'm going to teach these people that I saw when I had the graphic design agency. I'm going to teach people like this that, you know, if you want, let's say, if you want to get to a million dollars a year, to seven figures, for example, uh, if your body is not optimized, for example, it's like a car trying to win a race with a flat tire. Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't make sense. So the fact that you have a very nice shape, the fact that your health is on point, it's going to make it much easier, for example, to get to seven figures. It's not the other way around. It's not like monk mode and ignore it. No, if this helps you, right? So yeah, that's one That's one of the things I teach a lot because I was in their shoes back then during like four years when well, with my first business. Yeah. I mean, that graphic design agency, that's also something that I'd be pretty curious about. So you went from freelancing the agency and then you sold it. Um, what were kind of the steps that you took to make it into an agency? Um, how did you sell it? To whom and for how much? If, you, if the numbers are allowed to be talked about. Yes. So... First, the first question is how it started. Yeah, how you transition from freelancer to the agency model. Agency? Yeah, so uh, I um, I was always a lot in, uh, into social media. So I was posting a lot of my works on social media back then. Started getting more and more clients and eventually, and I was doing branding. I was focusing on branding. So the logo, the uh, business cards and everything. And I did this for like, two years, almost three by just by myself. Mm. But then I started getting people asking, hey, can you also design my website? Can you also do this, that? And I was like, okay, I can either learn to do this or <laughs> I can you know, outsource it to someone that knows how to do it better and I have more time to focus on the business itself. So yeah, I just started hiring people because I didn't know how to do certain things and I, I didn't want to learn it. I wanted to focus on the business instead. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I started hiring people to do like the, the, the website design and everything. Um, and you know, one thing leads to another, like first you hire like your first designer, then you want to hire someone also to do the, the branding because I, I was just doing like, let's say for example, the sales calls and business management and, uh, it's just small steps, you know, you just start hiring people because you don't have time to do everything. Mm. So it was, it was never like a huge team. It, like, we just got to like four people. Mm -hmm. uh in 2020 uh when when i sold it and um in answering your question how i sold it um because i had like connections with, like with other graphic designers that were big at the time as well like in, in the social media space uh they were following me on socials i just put a story like on on my soldiers like hey um okay. You know, like uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, I explained everything. I explained that I was transitioning to uh, something different, and um, that I was gonna sell the the social media platforms and the um, and the company itself. I had some offers. It it was not for, for overnight. It took like five, four or five months. Yeah. And yet in November 2020, that's where I when I sold the company officially. Sick <laughs> How for how much did you sell it for? It was a very low amount. It was uh, it was not even six figures. It was mm. uh, it was five figures yeah. uh, because, like I said, like uh, it was a small company. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it they were mostly buying the social media accounts. If I'm yeah. being fair, what, account, what accounts yeah. did you have, and how big were they? Um, with graphic design, Behance is, is a social media platform specifically specifically mm. for designers maybe you never heard it's called behance dribble i have an instagram account for that for for um, the the graphic design yeah it was those three platforms it was the, those three um yeah so that's mostly what they were buying the, the social did, media platform did they also buy like your client base I'm, I'm sure you had like some sort of recurring clients or something like that was that included in there 
Unfortunately, I didn't. That was one of uh, the reasons I transitioned because mm. it had a recurring client model, uh, which, mm. as you know, is not the, the best kind of business. So yeah. that's why also it, it had a lower price point because it had no recurring clients. Mm. Um, good thing it had was the exposure of the socials. That was what the, the, the price point was was based on. Gotcha, gotcha. That's interesting. And when you when you transitioned, did you already have the kind of the fitness coaching going on? Or yeah. were you just starting? Okay, so I guess there was less risk involved. You were just like, fuck it, I'm already doing the other thing. A hundred percent. I never wanted to be one of those broke fitness guys trying to sell you supplements. You know, mm -hmm. like one thing <laughs> I didn't want to. So I just went into it where I was like, okay, if I don't make money for five years, I'll be good. If the worst thing happens and I wouldn't make money for the next five years, I would be good. So uh, this way, I was like not dependent on uh, on anything where I started. And uh, but yeah, I was already starting the fitness thing mm. like four months prior to selling the company. So it was like a smooth transition. Uh, it was not like I quit one and I started the other. Yeah, it was gradual. Uh, probably like like it was for you back in the day when you when you transitioned. Yeah, yeah, it was very much so two things happened. Number one, like I, I had people come into me and buying my dating programs mm -hmm. just to then ask me business questions. Like I remember this one guy, he he bought like one on one program with me for, for 24k back in the days. And I have a one on one call with him and I'm like, So how can I help you? You know, like how's how's it going with the ladies? He's like, Oh, happily married for 10 years. Just bought your program to ask you business questions like how I can build a coaching business. And I'm like, Oh, I'm onto something here. So it was kind of like a natural thing. Plus, I think there was like a two or three month period where I was still selling dating stuff, but then also the business stuff on the side. And the business stuff, number one, it outperformed the dating stuff like crazy. We were making way more money. And then number two, it excited me much more. I felt it was something that is closer to my passion. I always liked helping people. I loved helping people in the dating stuff. But then for the business stuff, I'm like, this is kind of cooler. It's a, just a personal preference of mine. And then we just transitioned all in. I was like, okay, let's just go. Let's go all in there. And I also have to shout out to, you know, RSD and Owen. They were super supportive on that. And I mean, I'm still in touch with basically all of them. You know, I've had Jeffy on the podcast. I've had um, Madison on the podcast. I hope I have Julie on the podcast this year, but we're always both traveling weirdly. So maybe we'll make it online happening. And um, and, and, and yes, yeah, it's, it's been pretty cool. Now, seeing that you're posting so much on freaking Snapchat, and by the way, I finished down, uh, finished setting it up, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. How big is your social media team? And are you traveling with a camera guy or how exactly does that work? I live with him. I literally live with him. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I literally live with him. Bro, my team is super lean. I my team is literally three people. <laughs> it's literally me, my guy that lives with me, and a uh, uh, coach, an assistant coach that uh, mm -hmm. they work both of them work full time for me. Mm -hmm. Um my assistant bro is a machine. Like uh is yeah. a, a fucking he does like social media management. He edits the videos. He does the DM setting. Um, it's it's <laughs> no like way. an A player. He's an A player, man. So, Beautiful, uh, man. Yeah. So uh, we met through RSD back in the day. Ah, <laughs> as, classic. Back in the day as well, like both interested in picking up girls and stuff. That's how <laughs> we originally met back in, in 2017. So um, we already knew each other for a while. And, uh, you know, when I was looking for a videographer, I put it up on my stories. Of course, I got hundreds of replies. He was the one I, I knew for a longer time from back in the day. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, let's get a shot. And um, eventually, we were just doing things online. It went well. I'm like, bro, you want to start traveling with me? And I was like, Sick. yeah, let's do it. So, uh, so yeah, now we, we uh, hang out together. To be fair, now I don't travel as much as I as I used to back in the day. I've kind of settled down here in Brazil. Mm. I've kind of like found my place um, mm. here in Brazil. So I just spend uh, like around seven, six months uh, here in Brazil and the other half of the year in Portugal, which is my uh, where I was born in the first yeah, place. Yeah. And I hung out a bit with Mario there. He's also living there in Portugal. True. Um, and uh, and other guys um so uh and yeah we live together 
uh, what made you uh, first of all where, whereabouts exactly in brazil what city in the south uh it's right next to florianopolis i don't know if you ever heard about it what yes. why exactly there so uh brazil um it's the most beautiful country in the world mm. and uh but it has a very big problem which is the safety mm. um as you know a lot of people talk about and you probably heard about south america it's dangerous and this and that so that's you know how it is in the north of the country now yeah. what a lot of people know is that in the south it's even safer than europe hmm. and and it's even cleaner than europe like if you know sure. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you look out out here like in the in the streets like it's a super wealthy place um it's back when world war ii like ended a lot of like germans Italians, <laughs> polish people came here to live here yeah. and they brought health and they brought like the the german uh um you know um planning of the cities and everything mm -hmm. so everything is very european here mm. um so um i can even show you here yeah let's have a look yes oh. nice nice setup there first of all that uh, looks pretty yeah. sick oh yeah. s oh damn all right how many people live there? It looks like a huge skyline. Uh, you mean in the city around like over a million, I'd say. Damn. Okay. All right. So you you were I I guess you were trying multiple cities in Brazil, and then you just got stuck in this one. Uh, bro, it was luck. I'm I'm gonna show it with the camera as well, so that then you can yeah. get the. Yeah. Um. I uh, was lucky because I had another friend that is Portuguese and that uh, he came here because, you know, life brought him here. Like he's also an entrepreneur and he had someone, a mentor that was here and that invited him to come here. And he came with a mentor. Um, and uh, he, bro, he was amazed by this place. He told me to come here. And so it was like a referral. I came here <laughs> through a referral system. <laughs> and uh, so it was pure luck. So imagine you, uh, you have a place that uh, they spoke German there, and uh, that was like paradise during winter. It was warm during winter. Yeah. That's, the, that's the equivalent for me. So I speak Portuguese. Uh, I come here, they speak Portuguese. So it's kind of like a no-brainer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> awesome, man. I yeah. mean, you've. what made you stop the traveling? Because I know, I know what made me stop the traveling, although... Yeah. I keep traveling <laughs> for some reason, but I'm always curious, like what, what are like the, the main factors behind your decision now to say, Hey, I'll only do Portugal and Brazil at least most of the time. Yeah. There are so many things that get better when you settle down. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's crazy. Like I love routine, right? Yeah, I same. think to have, to have a life full of adventure and cool experiences, you need the contrast of the routine mm. because if you don't have this contrast of like routine, and, uh, you know, crazier experiences on the weekend, crazy adventures. If you don't, don't have this uh, contrast, you don't experience either. And uh, even the adventure don't, don't feel as good. So now when I spend the whole week grinding here with this amazing view and, um, you know, I have a really productive week, making a lot of money, helping a lot of people get in shape. It feels much better on the weekend when I go do the jet ski, when I, <laughs> when I play out with my friends. That feels much better instead of when I was just like going around, spending like two months in one place, uh, four months in another, like randomly. It's like when you don't have a routine, you don't feel the highs as much. Yeah, that's a very good point. I've heard this a lot of people that are kind of doing perpetual traveling. A friend of mine, Misha Janitz, for example, he's like it like all these crazy experiences, they get normalized. Right. Like you go to like an epic waterfall and it's just like the 10th waterfall you've seen this year. So you're like, yeah, take a couple of photos. It's cool. But it's like you said, like when, when you just grind it out and then you do something and you're like, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm at this random cafe in the city. <laughs> you know, it's um, I noticed it here. And this is one of the, the coolest things about about being here at this place for me right now. I got this little studio set up and this is a tiny studio. It's like, it's got this wall with the awards and then some space for the treadmill and that's it. There's nothing else here. It's just pure hustle, no distractions. I got two monitors and that is it. And, um, and you know, I, you probably do the same. I get my food delivered. Uh, I, I leave the house three times a week to go to the gym. 
And that's really it. I, I, I don't do much. Like my girlfriend works. She loves her job. You know, I always keep telling her like, hey, like you don't need a job anymore. Like we're, you know, we're good. But she loves what she does. So she's out. She go, She gets up in the morning together with me. We have breakfast together. Then she goes to work. I hustle. She comes back around five, six. We, uh, we chill a little bit, go to bed. And it's just the same over and over. And then on the weekends, like you said, I mean, we can't go jet skiing because it's cold as AF here in Europe right now. But we do, you know, we go to a snowboard kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So when I do do that, it's like, like, like you're almost on a dopamine detox and it feels so fucking cool. And then, but I'm, you know, you're, you're super young. I'm sure you're going to go crazy traveling again at some point where it's like a year of full travel or something. And then, and then you'll probably go back to just, you know, routine. I don't know, because even for relationships, like it feels like. Sometimes I remember you complaining about this as well. That when you were like going all, the, all around all the time, sometimes you meet a really cool girl, and uh, you know, like you can't continue with her. That was like yeah. a big issue as well. And uh, I didn't want that anymore. Like I wanted to, if I want to be with one girl, I can stay with her, mm. right? Um, that was another big aspect, of also like of stopping the so much traveling. Uh, also, like the relationships aspect. It makes it so hard to actually like get together with one person for like a longer period of time. So yeah, um, good point. Good point, man. Good point. And uh, but you know, apart from that, like you've been, you did it right. The the traveling cause it was because what I did in the beginning with the dating business, like I was touring, which means every week a new city, which means you're in a city and you don't really get to see much. Like I remember I was in New York like five or six times before I even, you know, went to see the Chrysler building or went to to frickin' uh, uh, Times Square. Cause all I saw the first five, six times was just hotel rooms and seminar rooms. But what you did is like, you you stayed like three months in, in most of the cities that you went to. And I, and I wrote them down, like it's Dubai, Houston, Miami, Bali, Toronto, Paraguay, Brazil, Portugal, of course, Poland and Serbia. What what was the best city for you in regards to socializing and meeting fellow entrepreneurs? Oh, Dubai, a hundred percent. Yeah. By that aspect, nothing comes remotely close in terms of like networking. If, if networking was all I wanted in that <laughs> stage of my life, I would be in Dubai. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. It's every single place you go to a small cafe, uh the day day the time beach lounge every place you go to you just see like a guy casually walking by with his rolex or his yeah, pattern yeah. and uh people there are just open to to meeting each other it's like most people go there for that specific reason and uh, even my business now on my fitness coaching uh mentor i met him there shout out to charlie uh charlie johnson um uh, i met him there uh, he's the guy that you know got my business to the next level, um, nice. and uh, and I'm really grateful to have met him in Dubai in the first place. So um, so yeah, for networking, Dubai, a hundred percent. As a All lot right. of people, know, yeah. Okay, what about food? For food, uh, that's a trickier one. Um, hmm. But I would say my country is has the best food, Portugal. <laughs> so I, that oh, one, I, th- I never traveled to a place with better food than Portugal, to be fair. And I think Mark <laughs> can attest to that because he's living there now. Yeah. Uh, what kind of what kind of food? What are what is Portugal famous for? We have our amazing meat. So if you're mm. a meat person, Hell yeah. amazing meat. If it, of course we live by the ocean, so amazing fish as well for those who like it. Bro, it's just the Mediterranean diet. As you we live in Cyprus, so we have mm. like clients of the Med- Mediterranean diet probably. Um, Mediterranean diet is just healthy and tasty. It has a good combination. Mm. So a lot of people I I coach with the, the that I help lose fat and everything. I they live in the U.S. and I introduce ah. them to the Mediterranean diet, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't knew healthy food could be this tasty <laughs> is good." You know what I mean? <laughs> in the, in the recipes and everything like to use olive oil in terms of in ter- instead of soy uh, oil and stuff like that. Yeah. They're like. This is actually even better. Mm. Yeah, some people are quite surprised. So my country has the best food, I'd say. I mean, now that you say it, man, I think I think we even wrote about that on Instagram. I was in Portugal last year, and I think September to see uh, Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> it's like super random. They were touring Europe, and Lisbon was one of the few. 
places that still had VIP tickets. So we went there and I stayed there for two nights and I got awesome steak there. Both like, oh my God, it was the completely different level, man. So I can attest to that. Um, <laughs> now you've also lived in Bali for three months. Did you like it or was it overhyped? Uh, I was in Bali for eight months, actually. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, I can tell you that it's perfect in a lot of ways. It's not overhyped. Mm -hmm. But for business owners, the time zone, it's um, a deal breaker. Because it's the other side of the world of, uh, you know, the Western world. We, US, Europe. Yeah. So you have to have calls at 10 p.m. And yeah. this. And, and I'm a really morning person. I like waking uh. up at 7 doing my stuff in the morning, going to the gym, maybe a bit more in the afternoon. Uh, but at, at 5 p.m. I clock off. Mm. And uh, that you, can, you can't achieve in Dubai. Mm. So time zone was one of the few deal breakers in Bali. Yeah. Everything else, not overhyped, trust me. If, if anything, it's understated. Bali is such an amazing mm. place um, that uh, if you want to enjoy, if you're not like worried about you know calls for your business and everything, and you need a month of that, um bali's uh and i know you're in meditation and stuff so you're more into this spiritual part too so bali it's an amazing place for that as well damn it's so funny like the more people i talk to uh the more hyped i get about all kinds of different places so you made brazil really interesting for me um two days ago i talked to darren lee he lives in um i think he actually lives in bali somewhere southeast asia and he's also like, it's super sick there. You got to come. And like, everybody keeps telling me, you got to go there. You got to go there. And I'm like, damn, this life is too beautiful. There's too much yeah. cool, epic shit to go to. Plus, you know, last year I was in Japan for a month. I just lived there for a month straight up. And I loved it. So I want to go back there. And then, you know, of course, Cyprus all the time. And now I miss Austria again. Like, I want to walk around the mountains and stuff. And two other friends of mine, they want to go up a hike up a 6,000 meter um uh, mountain in Georgia where they invited me in July. So I'm like, ah, I guess I got to go there too. It sounds that, pretty that's cool. probably Nikita, no? <laughs> no, no, it's not Nikita. It's actually uh, it. Florian and Kevin, two, two good friends of mine. I might have okay. Florian on the podcast as well. And Kevin's a business partner. Yeah, I think for Nikita, 6,000 meters is not even a lot. You know, <laughs> he's like, yeah, what, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Have you met Nikki Bra yourself already? You know, he was actually my coach before I was a fitness coach. He no coached shit. <laughs> so that's uh, epic, man. Yeah, back in 2019, 18, something like that. Wow. So, other than Mario, he was another one of the my inspirations to it was one of those people that I was like, okay, he's like, I don't know, six years older than me or something. It was yeah. another person I was like, I wouldn't mind being here in six years. <laughs> uh nikita so shout out to him thanks yeah. for the patient that he, he gave me i i mean with nikki bra the crazy thing about this guy is like he's traveling a ton and he and because it's so crazy so i talked to to another friend of mine ash dykes uh and he's like yeah like i can't imagine uh because obviously ash has a, a lot of skills that he would absolutely be crushing if he would coach that but he's like i don't know but how would i do that when i'm in the jungle because you know ash ash dykes he travels around like going crazy jungles and stuff like that he's broken a bunch of records and then i'm like i mean yeah it probably won't work in the jungle but then also i know nikki bra he, he's got this like five thousand dollar satellite internet thingy that he carries with him and he's like i remember he once replied to my coaching question because i you know you do a weekly check-in with him and he's like yeah Greetings from Everest Base Camp. <laughs> it just says like he sits in this tent on Everest Base Camp with his laptop with satellite internet, just coaching his clients. <laughs> so fucking amazing. And um, you know, there's like a bunch of main characters in this world, and uh, it's so cool. And Nikki Bra is definitely one of the main characters. You know, where you're like, how do you live this crazy fucking lifestyle? And um, yeah, man, you're doing the same. Like you've traveled while making multiple six figures a year and stayed in shape and all that. And I know a lot of people can't do it. What was kind of like your learnings? How did you manage to do all that? So that's another part where the routines help so much. Hmm. Uh, for example, for me, I have a list of things that I are a requirement for me to stay like, let's say a month in a city, especially back then when I was traveling. And uh, being walkable is a big asset. 
right? So just the fact that you live in a walkable city mm. and uh, that you get to walk to your gym, that you get to walk if you need to get some groceries. Like I actively want to go get the groceries. I could tell my cooking lady to, to get them for me. Um, instead of getting my food delivered, I actually have like, she comes cook at the place, you know, like for yeah. like three hours, meal prep for three or four days. But anyways, like I could tell her to go get my groceries, but I, I actually want to because, you know, know thyself. I am a person that likes walking in the street. Mm. I know like that this comes back from like years. Like I always liked walking in the street. Um, and just that, just to those 10,000 steps a day, let's say that's like the magic number that everyone knows. Yeah. Uh, there's no magic about that number, but it's just like a milestone. Just that helps you so much, like in, in staying in shape. And um, man, to be fair, like um, in terms of the, the traveling, I just allocate slots for fun and I allocate slots for uh, uh, focus. Hmm. And even though I travel a lot from Monday to Friday, I'm grinding, right? Hmm. Like the weekends I enjoy more, but from Monday to Friday, I'm grinding. Um, and uh, I, you know, I really stopped watching like movies and, and, and TV shows and playing video games on my own, to be fair. Like mm. I just, um, I just use my spare time to, uh, you know, do research and see how I can like organize my, my stuff, like journaling and stuff. Um, so a lot of this free time I use to like plan and research. So that makes things much easier when you use your spare time more to, to research, to journal and stuff like that. Um, to to you know uh, balance things in your life yeah are you an introvert or an extrovert uh that i don't think it's like a black and white thing you know i think it's like a, a range hmm. and I'd, I'd say i'm uh i'm mostly uh extrovert like i'm hmm. like six an extrovert hmm. and for 40 percent introvert so it's not like black and white I'm yeah slightly, i'd say yeah, because that's interesting. Like, because because you said like Monday through Friday you're just grinding, and then on the weekends you're doing stuff. Because it sounded quite like an introverted lifestyle. I'm a huge introvert. I'm probably like ninety percent introvert. I could totally just be alone in a spaceship for ten years, you know, just by myself, just grinding. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, or like live in a bunker somewhere, you know, <laughs> like something like that. Um, but at the same time, I do like being around people, and I love talking. You know, as you might have noticed. Um, but at the same time, like that idea of just grinding and being left alone, like I really, really like that. And I think it's a big strength for introverts when you're building a business because that's what you're going to do. But then when you say like you're mostly extroverted, how do you nurture that extroverted side? Yeah. So, bro, if I go one day without hanging out like with bros, I feel anxious. Mm. It's weird. It's even it's even uh, weird. Like um, I always train with my bro. Um, I always like walking the street and having like people around me so that when I am here by myself grinding, I feel amazing, but I need ah. the, that small parts of my day where I have people around to like recharge me. And then when I'm alone, I feel amazing. Mm. Um, but on the other side, if the ratio is like two, like, let's say back when I used to live with like two, three people in the same house. And I was out somewhere around. That was already too much. And that yeah. made me feel overwhelmed. Hmm. So there has to be a nice ratio of like some parts of my day. I'm around people. I'm talking with my bros, shooting the shit. Um, so that it recharges me for the when I'm by myself. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. It does make sense. It does make sense. And that for me, it's exactly op opposite. It's like I recharge when I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. I love hanging out with others. But like I'm like, oh, finally, nobody here. <sighs> Relax recharging and then i'm like come on, let's do stuff right hey what's up real quick this episode is sponsored by nobody ha 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 you probably know this joke already i make it every single time i don't have any sponsors on the podcast not yet maybe i'll have some in the future but the only thing i am asking you for is to leave a five star review whether you're listening to this on spotify or itunes or youtube or we're not there's probably some sort of thumbs up function or a five star review function. Please give us a five star review because it helps us rank higher. It helps me reach more people, give more value to more people. And of course, also bring more awesome guests on just like this one. So if you haven't done so yet, please leave us a five star rating thing. Thank you so much. And let's continue. Um, you mentioned earlier routine. You get up at 7 a.m. What does your, your day to day structure look like? So 
in the morning from like seven to uh let's say 11 so those first like four hours of the day let's say i say 360 days a year i like to work Mm. I maybe have four or five days of the year that I don't work in that time period, but the, the rest of the year, the 360 days, I work. Mm. Even if it's weekends, no matter what, I love working at that time. It's mm. it's I feel dopamine working at that time, mm. regardless if it's a Sunday, uh, regardless or if it's uh, I don't know Christmas Day or something. <laughs> I love working at that time. Um, so those first four hours of the day are precious. Then um, at 11, I kind of get ready for the gym. I uh, walk to the gym with my bro. I'm like catching up. We do a workout together. Um, then I come back, shower. And uh, then the afternoon, that's the most flexible part where some days I'm going to work. Other days, I'm going to, it's going to be more focused on like shooting content. Other days, I might have some stuff to do uh, outside. Uh, in the afternoon so that goes all the way until 5 p.m and then at like five six depending on the day that's where like it's more social so mm -hmm. that's more where i go like play beach tennis or paddle with my friends uh i might have a date um might be great getting ready for a dinner um so that period is like the more social part between like mm -hmm. six and like nine and then between nine and eleven I, that's where i like staying by myself and like it's more mm -hmm. like more reading uh that's a, a another period of time that is it's like i love being by myself between like 9 11 mm. those like last two hours of the day yeah it's more like section kind of uh kind of time so yeah this this is like the the biggest uh, routine like monday to friday of course on the weekends it's, it's a bit more flexible especially in the afternoon right in the afternoon it's more like we go to the beach. We uh, we go to, to jet ski and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it's roughly that. Do you have a lot of uh, changes between seasons here in Brazil, or is it always like eternal spring? How do you say? So here, uh, all the way from October until May, until the end of May. So beginning of October until end of May. So that's like eight months. It's uh, equivalent to summer in Europe. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> it's pretty much how it is and then from like june, beginning of june until end of september that's the winter here mm. which to be fair winter here is like 15 degrees <laughs> so, <laughs> still decent yeah so but i still go back to europe on that winter time yeah. uh to have summer in europe so um yeah that's roughly the how the seasons go here yeah, that's pretty decent, man. Damn. I mean, that's freaking beautiful. I, like I said, I've never been to South America. I've been to Panama uh, once or twice. And uh, and that's it. That's, that's how far south I've ever made it. But, you know, I've got so many. Ever, so, say yeah. it again. If you ever come, we have the second biggest Oktoberfest in the world uh, here. No way. In, uh, yeah. And if you, if you look up on Google, second biggest Oktoberfest. It's here, uh, like literally 45 minutes away from my from my home. Uh, so if you ever come, October. Uh, that is so <laughs> funny, man. Yeah. I mean, do you do you drink at all as as a fitness and, and health coach? Uh, what where are you on the spectrum? Zero alcohol or just high quality alcohol? Or what's your deal? Very much. I'm not. I was never too much in. I mean, I was like to be fair like between like 15 and like we start drinking at like 15 in Poland. yeah same in austria yeah so drinking I mean, age so, 16 yeah yeah so between like 15 and 21 i kind of got it out of my system the whole yeah. like getting drunk on the weekends parts and everything from 21 i was not like especially after like watching owen's content and everything <laughs> i kind of like put alcohol on the on the side like it was a good influence on that regard um and nowadays i just drink like very 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 moderately sometimes um i don't really it's not something i i do a lot like uh, if i yeah. have to say i think i like cheat the most that would be food man like i love a good burger i love some good Ooh. fries like that's the thing where i cheat the most yeah uh, not so much alcohol or, or drugs or something like that it's more the food part Yes, same for me. Like uh, I, exactly the same. Like started drinking at fifteen. Like again, 
before the the U.S. listeners are freaking out in Austria or most parts of Europe, drinking age is 16. For for at least in Austria, it was for beer and wine, 16. <laughs> for quote unquote hardier liquor, it was 18. So by the time I was 18 and I was like fully allowed to legally quote unquote get drunk, it was super boring for me. I totally got out of my system. And then and then of course also started watching the the Owen stuff, the RSD stuff in my 1920, and then just cut it out completely. And then I remember, and then I had I hadn't drank in like years, and then I was in Stockholm, and I had like a semi girlfriend there. Um, her name was Frida. I remember that she was a Swedish girl, long blonde hair, and and she took me out with her friends and Scandinavians, so they got me drunk as fuck. I was, and I was, you know, I had like three drinks or whatever, and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. These crazy Swedes are drinking me under the table, and they were all making fun of me, right? So I'm like, I can't deal this, and funny enough. Um, I can't, I hate alcohol. Like I don't like the taste at all. I have z- I don't understand how people could drink beer or wine for the taste. I, it doesn't taste good. I instantly get headache. Like every time I'm like, oh, I'm out with my girlfriend. We're at a super nice restaurant. Let's just get a bottle of wine and get tipsy. Every time I try that, my body skips being drunk and goes straight into hangover mode. It's like I feel good. I drink. Boom. Now I have headache and I'm nauseous. Like my body is just not used to the toxins, but like you said, food, man, food is where it's at. Food. We 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 were we watched Dune the other day in the movie theater. You should have seen the food that I smuggled in, like donuts, huge popcorn bucket, uh, nachos, two chocolate bars, and like uh, pine nuts, like all kinds of crazy. It was probably like four thousand calories while I was watching the freaking movie. What um what? Because <laughs> you said that you love cheating. Do you have a certain structure there as well? Like how many days a week you eat clean and do you have a cheat there or something like that? Okay, so it's more a thing of like time of the day. And uh, mm. it's not like until 6 p.m. I just eat clean. Mm. And then after I might eat clean or, or if I go out, I don't restrict myself. I have a burger. I love burger. A mm. Burger, pizza sometimes. Like that's the time where I don't restrict myself on the last meal of the day. Damn. Uh, yeah. So uh, that depends. If I'm by myself, I usually don't really have those kind of like sheet meals. It's more a thing when I'm uh, like with my friends, if I'm on a date, something along those lines. So that ends up being like three, four times um, a week, let's say. Damn, that's epic. I mean, how what what's your calorie budget per per day? Uh, this is very controversial. Uh, yeah, because I'm a fitness coach, but I don't, I haven't counted my calories in like over a year. <laughs> That's right. like I eat full, a full intuitive eating nowadays. This is not what I teach my clients. Okay, this is part of people are, that are part of my program. If you come to my program and you're like thirty five percent body fat, you're gonna count your calories. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way out of that. Okay, but for me now, I'm more into like a maintenance mode. So. I haven't counted my calories in over a year. I just have a high protein diet. I focus on always eating high protein on my meals. Yeah. And I was always like more on the skinny side. So mm. uh, I guess I have like a faster metabolism, which make to be fair, makes it, makes it easier for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just eat when I'm hungry, which of course I know roughly the times of the day w- w- when I'm supposed to eat. Uh, and I time it up properly before properly before the gym and everything. And I just focus on eating like, I know what's 30 grams of protein. I know what's 40 grams of protein. Yeah. On I know like how many eggs I, I need, how much chicken I need. So I just, that uh, I weight my food, I weight my chicken and everything, but I don't really count the calories uh, nowadays. I mean, do you, do you roughly know it? Cause, cause out of yeah. curiosity, I always ask it's like, how tall are you? What's your weight? And roughly how many macros do you eat? Yeah, r- roughly uh, 179 centimeters um, and for the U.S. people watching 5'10". And uh, I weight 81 kilos. Okay, So my maintenance calories now are roughly 3,000. Mm. So that's what I have to play with roughly um, about 3,000 calories. And Damn, protein- I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and protein, that's roughly like... I eat high protein, so that's like 190 grams of protein per day. Yeah. To have. I know roughly how much that is, even though I don't count it, you know, precisely. Yeah. Uh, I know roughly how much that is. Yeah. 
and funny enough, Zoom is cra- going crazy right now with your background because you make all these hand hand. Can I do the same? It doesn't do it with me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for, for the people just listening, is Zoom is giving him like firework backgrounds right now. Um, so what I what I found interesting is because you said like you know you've uh, you've always been the skinny guy. You got bullied in school and all that, but you love food. So most skinny guys I know, they're like, yeah, whatever, food is not important. And they're having trouble eating a lot. But you're, you are selling the, you're telling me the opposite right now. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, like for some reason, I, I, I think, to be fair, it's, uh, it's two aspects. It's the body, like I always moved a lot ever mm. since I, was, I grew up in the countryside all the way until I was 17. So that's probably one of the reasons I like living in a city that's walkable because Mm -hmm. I grew up in a farm, you know, like I was always going into the woods, like walking for like riding my bike, doing this. I was like hyperactive, like always the entire child. So that's the first aspect. And on top of that, I always, uh, my mind was always racing. So of course, as you know, like the the brain burns a lot of calories as well. Ah. my, My whole life, like my mind was always racing. I was fortunate that I was able to like point it the right w- way because yeah. if it did, things would have went south. Um, but my mind was always racing. So this combination of both things made me always burn so many calories. Mm. And uh, I was always, I didn't want to get fat. Mm. So I I never, you know, ate until I was full when I was younger. And l- when I was like 21, I got my first nutritionist. And she told me, like, if you want to put on muscle, like, you have to eat more. And I'm mm. like, am I not like gonna gain fat? And she's like, no, like, trust me, eat. And bro, during the first like five, six months when I got a nutritionist and I was lifting weights, I was putting on like almost a kilo a month. It was <laughs> six months. It was crazy. And um, so yeah, like, it was only when I allowed me to actually eat what my body body needed that I actually started to put on some weight. Damn, man. How, how did you get a nutritionist? Just because you said like you want to progress or was it like some sort of health mandatory thing, mandatory or whatever? Well, it was a fortunate coincidence that my gym membership, uh, when I went to oh. college, had a nutritionist included like once a month. Because nice. I think if a nutritionist, like, I mean, back then we didn't have TikTok and everything tell you about calories. Yeah. Cal- yeah. Or, like, Back then, like if I didn't have the nutritionist, I would have probably kept going lifting weights without eating enough food and just being those skinny mm. elite guys, you know, like so that was fortunate that the gym offered that back then, uh, even though mm. it was something super simple, but it really changed the direction of my fitness journey to allow me to put on muscle. Yeah, it's again that butterfly effect, huh? It's like one thing and changes the whole course of your life. It's so freaking crazy. I mean, just to touch back on on those tough times that you've experienced where you where you got bullied and all that jazz like i'm lucky enough to never gotten bullied myself not really um but for me it was more like i was just the outcast because i was awkward i was not like a target for stronger kids or something like that but i was still like nobody really wanted to do a lot with me because i was always the awkward star wars nerd talking about lord of the rings then of course i started listening to metal which didn't resonate at all with the other kids because they're like he just listens to weird music um how was it with you and how did those tough times kind of shape your life right now yeah so i grew up with a single mom so i didn't really have like a father figure to kind of like teach me how to defend myself like uh uh, from other kids at school and everything Mm. and that led to you know kids just take advantage of uh of you you know like just pushing you around and uh just like um bullying you pretty much Mm -hmm. so um now looking back i'm fortunate that things like this happen because if i didn't have you know i were not like bullied when i was a kid and like if i didn't have like these shitty things happen when i was younger nowadays i would probably have maybe i would have like an average life like an average nine to Mm -hmm. five but because like I was really like, I really didn't like this. And like, I didn't really like the guys not respecting me, girls not being attracted to me and like all of that. I was like, okay, I have to do something to to change it. 
And, uh, you know, that's how things started back in like the way with personal development, with RSD and everything. Most of the guys that, uh, that started with it came from that exact same background of like mm -hmm. guys bullying them, girls not wanting them. So it's a fortunate thing that, you know, it's a pain that you kind of like have to go through yeah. if you want an exceptional life. Um, and when you're even now looking back, like we look back to this shit that we had when we were younger and we still feel like, oh, that was like bad. But if you really think about it, it's like, no, it was actually good that we had. Like, hmm. now we're good, right. I mean, one, one question that I always ask guys like you, and I'm always curious about the answer is like, cause you got it out, you got it figured out and you got from being bullied, you, you stepped up, you're now a successful business owner, you're in great shape, you're crushing it, you're learning, you're improving, you made it happen. But for every one of you, there's probably hundreds of guys and girls out there that don't step up. And for you, you said, you know, RSD, personal development, those things were a catalyst, like they multiplied it, they helped you. But somewhere in there must have been this, the spark that ignited the fire in the first place. But then again, some people apparently don't have that spark. They are just a victim their entire life. What do you think is the difference? What do you think is that spark that makes people go from zero to stage one? I think there has to be a really strong desire for something that in that situation is out of reach. And it has to be something very specific. And you have to have a really big desire hmm. for, for that specific thing. And uh, everyone is different in terms of like this thing that they desired before they started this journey. Um, but I think I've never met anyone that is in a successful place now uh, coming from like a shitty background i never met anyone that like didn't have a very strong desire for a, a specific thing a specific mm -hmm. vision that they had for a few years later um i get people that didn't have enough attention friends of mine didn't have enough attention as a kid and they had like a big desire for fame uh mm -hmm because like they wanted attention and they craved it when they were a kid so now they they really wanted it like when they grew up um other people no one listened to them and so they wanted to become a coach so that they could people for a living uh, and they now they want to impact as much lives as possible which is a very positive thing yeah. but that started because of this lack uh that they have so yeah. it's good to turn a lack of something into something positive. Like, yeah. Like, so there is a lot of different reasons. Some people have one, some people have like a mix of them. Um, but there has to be this strong desire for something. Um, mm. And, and it, there has to be a big discomfort if you don't have that thing in your life. You have to feel really like uncomfortable and bad uh, if you don't have this thing that you're desiring for on your life. And this gap, it's what causes the, the change to happen. Yeah, that's a good point, man. And like I said, I, I ask that to everyone. And the, the, the answer is always slightly different. And uh, that's why it's interesting for me. Now, you've mentioned desire. You've mentioned discomfort. <clears throat> Clearly now, you, you have less discomfort than before. Uh, in a lot of people's eyes, you're living the life that a lot of the people that follow you want to live. Do you still have a desire on a personal level, on a business level, and what is it? Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely do. I definitely do still have uh, a strong desire. And uh, that is what keeps me uh, going, for sure. I, uh, when it started, I had this thing in, mind is desire in mind and uh, i still i still have it. you know it didn't really change the difference is that now i feel much more fulfilled and uh, i feel happier because mm -hmm. i have a, like a lot of the things i wanted uh but the desire just like for you for example it still has to be there otherwise mm -hmm. uh you wouldn't i feel you wouldn't feel so motivated to to do things for sure yeah i mean 
for me right now, I've, I've said this many times before, is we're making multiple seven figures a year right now. We're close to eight figure mark. Uh, we were close last year as well, but then we've had, you know, small issues. We were running out of staff. We had too many leads. We needed to get bigger sales team and, uh, and all that jazz. So for me, the desire is like, we want to get to a million a month because that's not necessarily because of the money, like money motivates me much less now than before. But because it's 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 an achievement, it's just this this random number. It's like a high score that you want to hit in a in a game, you know. Um, so that would be kind of cool for us. What is it for you in, in the business? Do you you make multiple six figures a year now? Do you have a goal of of scaling this multiple seven, or is the goal just to just to stay where you're at and keep doing what you're doing, or what is it exactly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next goal is definitely like eating seven figures. That's like, of course, like I feel. A lot of people have this goal, like in this coaches uh, space, eating seven figures, like and impacting the people's lives doing so, right? Like, so that's a, a big um, goal for the business because it's like the, the money that you make is like a score that shows like how many people's lives are you helping. And uh, definitely that's like a big, big benchmark. But uh I guess the goal for me like was always like the good life it was not just like a number of money it was all like the good life and using that money to help with having a good life in the other aspects right in every other aspect mm -hmm. so um at every stage in my life like i'm always trying to to minimize the amount of stress levels in my life that's like a, a big goal always nowadays so um even if that costs like less profits in your business, I don't mind outsourcing a bit more and having less stress mm. if, if that's going to cost me a couple of thousand a month, right? So uh, nowadays, like that's a big goal of mine, like to maximize like achieving these goals with while diminishing the stress, diminishing the, the anxiety throughout the day and uh, maximizing like how I have a good life that's really like the world that Ty Lopez popularized like that yeah. life. and I kind of got it from him you want to make sure to get the good life you want to scale the business while at the same time having balance is it a thing where you say you cut back on the work and you delegate like you said or is it also you kind of reframing the relationship you have with work in your brain <clears throat> Um, it had to be a lot of reframe as well, because as you know, like the the more you want to grow the business, you have to delegate a lot, and it's mm -hmm. hard to delegate and let go of things. Yeah, because your baby. we are control freaks a lot of times. Like if you're a business owner, we are control freaks, so it's very hard to let go of your baby. Like something you created, like uh, something that you did literally from scratch. And now you're putting it in the hands of someone that, um, you know, like just came in like a few months ago, let's say. Um, so, yeah, like you definitely develop, like have to develop yourself, like this this skill of delegating and the skill of time. Uh, that is very important when you're you're growing a business for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's like a muscle that you need to grow. It's it's so, like you said yourself, like you're control free because because it the the being a control freak is what gets you to the first gets you to a level in the first place where you can even fucking delegate things like if you're not a control freak if you're too you know relaxed you're not even going to get to a level where you have something to delegate and then and that's kind of the cool thing about business man you've noticed it yourself um bus the business journey is all about learning things first mastering them and then letting go of them to learn something else it's like what got you here won't get you there it's a famous phrase in entrepreneurship so <clears throat> from zero to 10k a month it's a lot about just freaking volume like a lot of people think oh it's about like the magic pill like what app should i download that's gonna make me go viral the easiest you know it's like no shut up it's just like you're gonna make a lot of content that nobody wants to hear or write or see you're gonna dm a lot of people you're gonna be on a lot of calls of people that won't buy it. it's just volume 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 because you got nothing else going for you and then and then you you got the volume part down so you're making 10k a month <clears throat> now let's say you want to make 30k a month so but you're already working eight nine ten twelve hours a day so you're in in your head you're like well if i in order to get a 30k a month i can't work even more and that's where a lot of people get burnt out but they don't realize that <clears throat> at that level you need to let go of the volume part 
and switch to another vehicle, which is all about structures and procedures. Like that is where you need to proceduralize the DMing process, the sales process, the content creation process, so you can start delegating it. So now you learn that, you learn all the procedures, great. Now you're making 30K a month, maybe you got one or two assistants. And now you say, well, let's make 50K a month. Well, you got all the procedures and you're trying to automate it with procedures, but it doesn't work because you need to start delegating and you need to have a small team that starts taking over more and more. So now you let go of the delegate of, of the procedure process tasks. And now you got to acquire the skill of, of, of people. Like you need to hire people, interview them, you need to manage them. You know, you need to have a good system where you're not too nice to them, but also not too much of a crazy asshole boss. So now you got to learn that skill. It's all, a, it's all a matter of acquiring a skill and then letting go of that skill at the right moment to acquire the next one. And what got you here won't get you there. And you can extrapolate that all the way up to making 500K a month. Because when you're like, once I cracked half a million a month, my, I had to completely change my, 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 my site from let's look at what I have to do this week to let's look at what we're going to do this quarter. It's like all of a sudden you have to learn foresight on a much, much longer time scale, which is again, a completely different skill and it messes with your, with everything. It, it's, and that's the crazy thing. Cause you mentioned earlier, pressure, anxiety as a business owner, it's only that it's like the moment you think you got it down. If you want to scale, you got to expose yourself to another unknown and that puts pressure on you and that puts anxiety on you and that kind of sucks. And then you do that, you master that and then you think, okay, I'm good now. But then there's this other unknown that you got to expose yourself to. And then at some point you stop resisting that unknown. At some point you're just like, ah, so that's what entrepreneurship is. It's just perpetual craziness. And you know what? I fucking love it (laughs) because like a lot of people, they see that craziness and they let they let it kill them. They let it make, turn them bitter. And that's where they just stagnate. They stay the same because they're like, oh, I don't want to hustle all the time, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to stay at my level. When in reality, it's just like they haven't learned, they haven't acquired that skill of enjoying the unknown, of enjoying the craziness of entrepreneurship. And, you know, now you have guys like you and I were like, we love the craziness about entrepreneurship. We got hooked on that. We're almost addicted to it. And now we're riding that wave of unknown, of anxiety, of weirdness. And that makes you a way stronger person. That makes you a better person, a fitter person, because you, you extrapolate that skill, that resilience to the gym. You extrapolate that to, to spirituality. You extrapolate it to all other skills. And that's why a lot of entrepreneurs like, like, like you are, are also in great shape. They also have a great network. They, they are not just master of one thing. They're usually masters of a lot of things because they've mastered the art of being okay with discomfort. If someone I met uh, has one area of their lives that is clearly out of balance, no, it doesn't matter if they're making like 10 million a month. I mm. am I learn from them. I'm going to still take advice from them. But I know it's not a person I'm going to be like buddies with, you know, like, because I don't admire someone that has one area of their life, like screwed up. If someone is making like 10 million a month and they have a beer, a belly, uh, (laughs) completely out of shape and they're 35, I'm not really going to be buddies. I might learn a lot from this person, but it's very hard for me to admire them. And um, because I... Uh, look at people, for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I admire him so much mm. because he accomplished, you know, like all that he accomplished and he balanced the other areas of his life, right? He accomplished the physique, he accomplished the relationships, he accomplished the, the business aspect. I admire him. But then there are other guys like, for example, Ronnie Coleman. I don't know if you know who I know that the, is. the bodybuilder. Yeah. It's hard for me it's super controversial, but it's hard for me to admire a person that, you know, ended up on a wheelchair, right? It's hard for me to, uh, I, I give him props for what he accomplished, and uh, that's amazing. But when I compare someone like this with Arnold, for example, it's hard for me to admire someone that yeah. sacrificed other areas of their life in because of one specific area, right? So... Um, yeah, like for that reason, I, I really, really uh, admire people that balance things in their life and they think long term as, as well. And they think of their older years uh, and everything um, instead of someone that, you know, like just 
focuses on one thing, ignoring yeah. the others. Yeah, man, it's a very mature way of seeing things, to be honest. And and I know you've worked with a lot of people, including the guy from the future, the 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 the, the YouTube channel. I, I literally started watching his stuff, and now I read like, oh shit, you you trained him. Do you? Uh, what is kind of like the best age? out of all the clients that you've had where you're saying like, okay, like if you're in your twenties or whatever, or if you're in your forties, you're going to have the easiest time getting in shape. I'd say thirties is the absolute best mm. um, for people that become my clients. Okay. And there's a reason for this. Like theoretically, when you're in your twenties, it's easier to get in shape. But a lot of people that I work with in their twenties, they're unable to, uh, be to follow the guidelines i gave them like they are huh. too much adhd right they're like huh. one one month they want to get in shape then the next month they get a girlfriend and it's not as important anymore i feel that people in their 30s are more stable mm. and when they come to me wanting to get in shape they take the program more seriously mm. right and it's something that they actually it's like they actually have a pain it's like okay i'm a dad now and uh, i don't want my daughter to see me out of shape when she's huh. five Huh. So uh, they take things more seriously while people in their 20s, of course, I have amazing results with people in their 20s, but they don't have as much as a pain. So it's harder for them to to commit so much to, to the program and the, to my recommendations. Damn, it, that's a very good point. You know, I'm in my 30s right now. And <laughs> when you're in your 20s, you think once you're in your 30s, your life is over. And then... Um, I haven't felt that right away, but I felt it then like last year when I turned 33, I'm like, oh shit, I got like seven more years and then I'm 40. But then I started meeting all these dudes that are crushing it in life that are in their 50s. And my real estate mentor, Andreas Hoppak, for example, he's he's got like beautiful wife. He himself looks young as fuck, super fit, crushing it, making a ton of money, owning real estate all around the world. And, and I asked him, I'm like, when was it that you peaked expecting him to say something like 29, 30? And he said, 44. He said, at 44, I had, I, I was still feeling great. Like my energy hadn't dipped yet, like it is now in my 50s. Plus I had all the experience that I didn't have in my 20s yet. I was mentally much more balanced. I was much more fucking confident. I had so much experience, so much more knowledge. And every time I asked that someone, they all say, yo, I peaked in the beginning of my 40s and i'm like that is fucking cool because then guys like you or i like we've we've started relatively early with our personal development journey probably much earlier than the guys that i'm talking to that are now in their 50s so by the time we're in our 40s and 50s we'll be even more ahead and then i see guys for example I, like i have sometimes very very young sales staff like we've had one guy he was 19 just turned freaking 19 and he was already selling, you know, $28,000 packages for our company. And I'm like, now you're 19. Like, you're so much further ahead than when I was 19. Like, you are at 19 where I was at 25, 26. So the generation after us, man, because they're growing up with watching stuff like ours that already puts them on the right path very early on. So those guys are going to have even crazier progress. Plus, to the advancements of health and modern medicine, they're probably going to live 10, 20 years longer than us. And we're already going to live to like 100, 120 years. I think it's possible for you and me, unless, you know, we have an accident, but just like health-wise to absolutely make it 120. So it's really great. Like the world is fucking fantastic. It's beautiful. What do you think with about uh, guys in their 40s, 50s? I'm sure you've trained a lot of those guys as well. What, what are the issues that the, these guys start running into with their age? So a lot of times people in their 40s and 50s, I don't have to work with them just to... Uh, in the fat loss and the gaining muscle, I also have to help them with the testosterone levels a lot of times. Mm. And uh, of course, that's extra um, care that we have to do. It's not just like calorie deficit, muscle and this and that. No, it's like they have low libido. Uh, of course, I work with people naturally, so I'm not telling them to do like uh, any uh, synthetic testosterone or something. I work on ways to improve the testosterone naturally. Um, and of course that is extra steps that we have to mm -hmm. add, which makes things take a bit longer, right? Recovering your testosterone and everything. So, um, but yeah, man, once you get your testosterone dialed down, you probably know, like 
everything else becomes easier motivation yeah losing fat gaining muscle and a lot of these people unfortunately they are unaware for decades of things they're doing chronically every single day that's suppressing their testosterone all the way from foods they eat habits they have um things they put on their body uh, like there's so many things so many small things that add up and make in crushes this guy's testosterone and they don't feel it, it on their 20s they start feeling on on their 30s but yeah. on their 40s that's when like it adds up and you you really feel what you did for the past decades you really feel it when you're in your 40s a lot of times and a lot of times you know these guys have like really low testosterone at that age i mean what what is it specifically that people or that, that men specifically do that decreases their testosterone and what do you then do to increase it naturally the biggest one is micronutrient deficiencies. So uh, if you have a specific micronutrient, specific micronutrients that you miss for a week, you might feel you're a bit off, but okay, uh, that's not a problem. But there's if there is specific micronutrients that you miss for years, it's going to have very big damage on your body. You know, and it's very common nowadays for people to have these micronutrient deficiencies. Like you say, the vitamin D, that's the most like popular one um and even that one being popular so many people know about it but still so many people are missing it which is like a key for testosterone right so if that one people are missing imagine the ones that they never heard about the selenium yeah. right the the, the iron deficiency the, the copper like there's so many that guys are unaware of uh but of course because i've been doing this for four years nowadays even before they, they do like blood tests or, or anything to, to check their blood levels, even before, a lot of times I look at the symptoms and, I'm, and I look at their lifestyle that they told me. <laughs> On one call, I'm able to tell, okay, you're probably lacking some omega-3. You told me you don't eat fish. You told me that you have pain on your uh, joints. Um, probably missing some omega-3 on your diet. They implement it and lo and behold, <laughs> after a month, they're feeling like much better, right? So step number one, for testosterone always fix your micronutrient deficiencies okay what are the other steps i mean sleep is pretty obvious mm. right so uh, people have poor sleep hygiene they just uh, lo are looking at the white screen right before bedtime <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean and then they're sleeping with a partner next to them and the room is super hot and the, the yeah. partner room even more hot which is bad like you have to sleep like in a cold room yeah have like recovery and then when they wake up they wake up like with anxiety because of the alarm is like super strong uh man like my wake up is like super chill like i have a lamp that simulates a sunrise nice. next to my bed so a lot of times i wake up just without light not even with any sound and then after 10 minutes of the sunrise birds start chirping that's my that's my alarm it's birds chirping Sick. quietly first and then they start getting louder and louder in case of like, I still didn't wake up. And at, at, at last, like if I didn't wake up with the sunrise, with the birds chirping, the last part of my alarm after 10 minutes of birds chirping, Arnold Schwarzenegger starts shouting. <laughs> 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 That's the 10 minute of my alarm clock. It's Come Arnold. on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, bro, he literally, Arnold, literally, I, I wake up to this every morning. Arnold says this, when you wake up, don't think, just get up, get out of bed and do something. That's literally the first words <laughs> I hear in the morning from Arnold. Uh, man, the goals. I, Arnold is like, I admire him so much. So I like waking up to him every morning. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking dope. Uh, gotta love Arnold, man. Gotta love that guy. He's one of these, he's one of these icons that is so much bigger than life there's not many people like arnold schwarzenegger in this world you can go like i remember when i was in 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 um in panama i rent i went to a random favela gym like a rent you know like that was just before panama started to become more luxurious and there was no gyms that had like a, a daily pass it was this random gym with like basement level uh, uh weights from the 80s but you bet the poster that they have huge on the wall hanging was Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger, the fellow Austrian from a cow town like you and me. 
and that you don't have. I, there's not much other guys or, or or girls out there that have reached that level of iconic. And that's really, really freaking crazy. I, I, I hope I can meet him at some point. I probably not. He he probably die before I meet him. But I love his books, and you know, like you said, like he's a huge inspiration to not just bodybuilding, but but business, entrepreneurship, uh, becoming a freaking rock like film star, and and also politicians. Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy fucking stuff. What is um? Where do you see yourself with thirty five? Do you see yourself having family, kids, traveling more, traveling even less? What, where do you live? All that. Do you have a clear vision at all? Yeah, I see myself living just like now Brazil and Portugal. I'm actually mm. buying my first property now. Nice. Uh, uh, here in in, uh, in Brazil, I'm in the negotiating process. So I see myself living here and uh, in Portugal. Um, so no more traveling. No more traveling for sure. Um, well... I want to have a lot of kids. That's for sure. I don't know if it's going to be when I'm 35. I don't know if it's going to be when I'm 40. Uh, Mario, for example, I had his first one at 37. So I think that's a, like, a roughly a good age to start for, yeah. at least for me personally. Uh, yeah. So I want to have at least three kids. I don't know specifically when it's going to start, but uh, we'll see. Um, and uh, I want to, you know, impact like millions of people. You know, like I want to show people that they can have an amazing lifestyle and be in good shape. And uh, because I I think people think of being in good shape as boring, as like salad diets and killing yourself in the gym and everything. I want to spread the message that no, like you can get an amazing shape and really enjoy life and really, you know, like experience the world. So that's also something I want to spread as much as possible to people. And um and yeah, like I want to experience more things. So even though when I say uh, uh, less traveling, I what I mean is not living in other places. It's traveling for me moving forward. Would be more like going for a week here for uh, mm -hmm. for vacations or, or a week there. It's not the, that like moving <laughs> kind of traveling. Yeah. It's like this kind of traveling. And there's a lot of experiences I want to to keep having, experiencing different places. Just like you said, there's so much to experience. It's like we would want to be 300, live to 300 years or 400. We're able to experience everything that there is to experience, you know. So I want to cram as much of these experiences as possible um, uh, during this time frame until 35 for sure. Yeah. Have you been to Austria before? Uh, I've, I have. I have, yes. Yeah. I, I have been to... A, a city close to Munich. Salzburg. I was in Munich. Salzburg, yes, on that castle at the top. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you have no idea how special that day was for me because people from Portugal, we don't see snow our whole life. Like uh. we, I saw snow maybe like once uh, in my life uh, until, until that point. I was in Munich. My friend suggested we all go to Salzburg to see the castle in the mountains. Um, so we got a train from Munich to Salzburg. It was sunny in Munich, okay, normal day, sunny. <laughs> and then it was like, I don't know, four hour train ride. Bro, during the ride, like it gradually, the the start, the, the sky started getting more and more gray. And okay, this is interesting. And then all of a sudden, it starts snowing, snowing, snowing. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> and then when I got out of the train in Salzburg, bro, there was so much snow and I was seeing snow for like, second time in my life it was like i haven't seen <laughs> snow in like 10 years or something <laughs> my friends it was the same bro we we're like kids like throwing snow uh, snowballs at each other it's it's like a day that i will never forget it was like super special and then like climbing to the top of like the, the mountain to see the castle and like through the snow bro i felt i was like in a harry potter movie or something like that <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, bro, it's moments like these I want to have as much as possible, like leading up to to thirty five. Like that, that was that was very nice. Man, yeah, when you come, like, like when you're in Europe next time, uh, send me a DM. Yeah, because uh, I might be traveling as well in summer, so maybe I'll come to Lisbon, hang out with Mario and you. Maybe, dude, let's do a a double podcast, like oh. you, Mario, and me, like a triple podcast thingy. That would be freaking yeah. sick, man. 
I will, I'm not, I'm not and of happy. course, if you come to Austria, let's go. Let me know. Uh, I have uh, my buddy, Yo Viral. Uh, I just invited him to go to see Metallica. They're playing the 1st of June in Vienna. It'll be like the ninth time I see them. Like, <laughs> I know you're probably not in mail, but it's really, really freaking cool, man. I like and, Metallica. I, I like Metallica, yeah. Oh, damn, you do, dude. Bro, when I was a teenager, that was all I listened to. Metallica, uh, ACDC, like, I, yeah. I, I, I that stage, but I used to listen to that so much when I was a teenager. Did, did, you, uh, did you ever see them live somewhere? Never. Dude, dude. Never. It's yeah. it's the most insane thing ever. It, we saw them live last year again in 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 uh, Paris, and it's just like you know the lights go out. They play the first song, and everybody's there. Like it's all guys like you and me, you know, like young guys, and they're all like, yeah, like everybody starts growling and screaming. It's like a, it's like you're in a in in a battle on a battlefield, but instead right. of people going to war. They're hugging each other. They're like jumping up and down together. It's such a it's it's such a cool juxtaposition of aggressive heavy metal music, but love and partying. And it's so the energy is, is just absolutely fucking unreal, man. Like I can really, really recommend it to you and to, of course, everybody listening. Like that's why, you know, I respect hip hop and rap and, 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 and EDM. I respect that as well. I've been to EDM concerts before. But nothing comes close to seeing a metal or a rock band live. For me, that's just a whole different sort of energy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I have to experience that sometime. Uh, Dude. I'm going to put that on my bucket list until 35. Do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and please, that. I'm going to write that. <laughs> yeah, man. And like I said, hey, let me know. Like, if, if you go see anyone in Europe, I'm always down. Like, I always travel around. Um, to to go see bands, it's it's really freaking amazing. But uh, dude, it, it's 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 been so cool to have you on the podcast. I know we've been DMing for so long back and forth, and uh, I really appreciate your time and all that. So for people that want to check you out, for people that want to reach out to you, where can they find you? On Instagram, it would be the the best. If you just search my name on Instagram, you can see like I have a lot of videos for entrepreneurs that want to lose body fat and yeah. want to. Uh, me and Max follow each other, so it's going to be easy for you guys to find me on Instagram. Mm. Uh, if you want to get in touch, just sh say you come from this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, because of course, I cannot open every DM. <laughs> you know, like, but if you <laughs> see that you're coming from this podcast, I'll open your DM. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, what's the rest of your day going to look like? What are you going to do today? Oh, I'm literally going to get my gym equipment now. My my buddy's probably already waiting for me. <laughs> In time, it's almost 12 p.m. here. That's 12 p.m. is like the time we go to the gym. Uh, so I timed the podcast uh, right uh, before nice. the, the gym time, and it was right on right the perfect time. Uh, gym uh, calls in the afternoon. I have like three, four calls in the afternoon, and then I'm going to play beach tennis, bro. I don't know if you ever nice. played in Never. Europe. We have to play some paddle or, or beach tennis when I'm there. Because, all right uh, dude i'm down sounds fucking cool i'm always down yes in lisbon there's some good good places to play battle yeah yeah let's go all right it's so 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 it is decided lisbon triple podcast plus paddling and all that jazz for everyone listening thank you very much for listening and dude like i said thank you for your time enjoy your workout go crush and um when the podcast goes up i'll let you know and then you know i'll promote it and all that jazz and and then we get some awesome value out there it was amazing, bro. It was amazing to meet you. Dude, Dito, man. Dito, stay in touch. And then, uh, yeah, let's go fuck shit up. <laughs> Whoo! What an epic lifestyle this fella gets to live. If you get inspired by that and you say, hey, I got a skill that I want to monetize. I have a hobby, a passion, or maybe you're already making money with a digital consulting, coaching, or service providing offer. We can help you with that. All you have to do is book a free call with me and my team over at maxtorno.com forward slash call. So if you're a beginner, you want to know what it is that you need to do to get started. Who can you target? How can you get your first clients? Where should you post? How should you position yourself? This call is for you. If you're already someone that makes money and you say, hey, how do I make 100K a month? How do I already make a 20, 200K a month? How do I get to 20K a month? Whatever your goal is, as long as it's probably 
uh, under 500,000 a month. That's kind of the highest that we've reached so far with our clients. We can help you. Also for you, the, the URL is maxtorna.com forward slash call. Just fill out the application, give us the info uh, that you want us to know, and uh, we'll literally give you a step-by-step -step plan entirely for free. And if, of course, you want to work more closely with us, we can talk about that as well. Other than that, talk to you very, very soon, and cheers.